We're nearly to the end, but we've got a highlight to come. It's a, it's a great pleasure to, uh, to have with us as our guest once again, after a gap of 13 years. I'm sure you all recognise this lady when we bring her up. I'm sure you, some of you have met her already during the day. Um, as I said earlier on, well, I'm sure a lot of people's favourite prisoner actress. Put your hands together and welcome Jane Merrill.
I got lucky there too. I got some lovely parts. I, my first sort of big, big part was Lorna Doom. I did for children's television, which mm. I just, we had so much fun on that show. And it was, it was a, it, we, had a, uh, we had a good laugh yeah, from beginning yeah, to end. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, sorry. I was just wondering, what was your preference? Did you enjoy doing the telly? Was it, or was, is it the way that, you know, you, when you're doing theatre, you want to be doing telly, when you're doing telly... No, doing I, I wanted to be doing whatever I was doing at the well, time yeah, I was doing. Just enough to yeah, work. I'm one of those people that, you know, yeah. I don't try to plan things too much. And whatever comes along and yeah. everything, I try and make the most of it. And there have been very few things that I've done that I really dislike doing, so... Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, no, I don't plan. Like every actor, you do some stuff just for the money, I presume. You know, do you ever pick up a script and say, well, I don't like it much, but I need to pay the mortgage this month? And, no, I never really thought of it like that. Yeah. Well, I consider myself always as a sort of jobbing actor, mm -hmm. you know, and a jobbing actor takes the work because you don't know when another offer is going to come along. And I never had those big money offers. No, uh, yeah. Per se, I never made huge uh, bucks as they say. In was that was that possible in the film industry in Britain? In the, in, in, you know, when you were I don't um, know. I, uh, I, I, no, not but really. Not the very big. You yeah. had to go to Hollywood yeah. to, to get the really big money. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, the English actors. I think most of the good English actors were actors. That's that was our job. That's mm -hmm. what we were trained to do. And we weren't there to get famous or you know, get lots of money, which is. A really sad comment on what's going on in the business today, and not just in the business. I mean, everybody wants to be famous, and everybody wants to make lots of money for doing what? You know, yeah, just for being famous. Just, famous just, for, being just famous. for being famous. And yeah. is there, you know, what is it there? Two minutes of fame as Andy Warhol said? Yeah, it means nothing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely nothing. But our, our, the way we were trained and the way it worked for us was. You know, you, 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 what you wanted to do was you wanted to do your job, which was act. You wanted to be an actor. Yeah. And uh, so when the opportunities came along, it didn't really matter to me what I, I did. You know, um, I enjoyed it. Sounds like, yeah, you mentioned the national. It sounds like you were getting into some pretty heavy... Did you have, do you have a preference? Were you, were you really happy to get your teeth into the meaty sort of Shakespearean type roles? Or did you prefer light comedy and stuff like that? Or did you, again, did you like the preference? Well, I think I would... Was it a genre you preferred? I went, well, I went right to have done... Shakespeare. I did yeah. some Shakespeare, but not very much. Yeah. If I'm very, very honest, the work I prefer most of all is film. Film, yeah. 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 Because it's such a different medium, and the theatre is wonderful, but I think I, I, I would mm. get kind of bored doing yeah. long, long runs. Um, yeah. And you do, after a while, because it, it, is, it's very, it, it, it is draining physically and, and mentally, you do start to create a... a, yeah. a, a, a you know, routine of doing it, uh, and you use the techniques to keep going. But in film, you're creating all the time, and it's incredibly challenging and difficult, believe it or not. People think film is easy, but it really isn't. But if you watch any of the really great film actors, um, you realize how. I can imagine that. I remember talking to Mark Eaton about one of these things, and he was saying that he watched, um, who was it? Uh, one of the actors, it was. His name up. He said he, he was told to react to something, and uh, as he watched behind the camera, Mark even said he didn't seem to do anything on camera right. because he was acting for an extreme close up, yes. a flicker of the eyelid said it all. And I, I always think that stage acting is about projecting, and, 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 sub, and film acting is about subtlety, isn't it? Yes, it is, and, and television is supposed to be the same as, as film in a way, but you just don't have the time. But I always remember when, when I did my I did a screen test, one two screen tests actually for the, for the Lion in Winter. Mm -hmm. And Peter O'Toole tested with every single actor, I'm sure I've told everybody this story before, but uh, that, that tested out for the other roles apart from the Catherine Hepburn part, because she told him to. She said, I'll do the film if you check out all the other actors, and that means, you know, testing with, a, with them. Really? So, at, at what stage? I mean, at the stage of casting, in other words, to yeah. see whether you would actually get the part. Exactly. Did, and you, did you test with Peter O'Toole? I did, and I was going to say, well, I was doing a scene from a play that I was doing at the time, and he stopped me through the test and said, I don't believe you. Mm. And I thought, uh-oh, yeah. you know, I'm doing this part every night. And he said, I don't believe what you're saying. Mm. And I thought, hmm, he's right. And that's what film acting is about. Right. You yeah. believability, right? making people truly believe what, what you, you know, what's going on. It must have been very daunting, though, testing with someone like Peter O'Toole. You know, it was a bit, yeah. yes. <laughs> I mean, like, almost like the Guru, he's a very daunting job. We'll talk well, about yes, Patrick, I mean, the great thing about working with really, really good actors is it's easy. 
I mean, it's much easier working with good actors than either bad actors or actors who just are so in love with themselves, they just want to be right. movie stars. Mm -hmm. But uh, none of those, neither Patrick nor Peter, suffered fools gladly. Mm -hmm. And they, they were right on you if you, if you were in any way dis dishonest in your work. Mm -hmm. You know, when I say yeah. dishonest, yeah. they didn't believe what you're doing. And also the discipline of it, um, you know, just the basics, knowing your lines, hitting your marks, all that sort of thing. And I was a bit afraid of, of Patrick um, because his reputation preceded him when I yeah, first worked yeah. with him. It was, on it was on a danger man. And, but, and but before I, we talk about danger man, can I just interrupt you? Now? Yeah. What could you give an example of what you were doing before danger man that led to the, you know, that led to? Well, I was doing. You mentioned Lorna Doon. Did Lorna Doon? I did a lot of, of really wonderful television. Mm, yeah. um, I did, uh, we, and we did all of the television in those days on tape. So it was like doing a play. We rehearsed yeah. for, you know, maybe 10 days in, in, a, in a studio, uh, yeah. a rehearsal room somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Then you'd go into the studios and you'd block out with uh, four cameras what you'd been doing. Mm. And then um, you had run-throughs of that and then you put it on tape. That's what they were doing and, and in those days, that, that show with the, 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 I can't, the astronaut. Oh, the astronaut, no, no, the, yeah, the artist, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 um, that was probably live, right. which is yeah. unbelievable when you think, I mean, those performances were quite extraordinary. Mm. Catherine Blake was yeah. fantastic, yeah. completely believable. Mm. Um, and you think, well, they'd been rehearsing, they rehearsed all of that, and then they went into the studio, they did all of that. Um, with their cameras, and then they blocked it, and then they shot. I, we did it on tape. I've only really ever done live television, I think, once, it was, or twice. It was very, very frightening. But in those days, it was all live. Mm, yeah, yeah. And you, you really learned your craft doing that. Um, I wasn't really thought. No, well, no, we were just asking about. Oh, we were going to talk about Daytime, though. We just yeah. wanted, now, you got the job on Daytime. Was that just a look through the normal channels, the agents were trying to Yes, uh, they said you know, the casting director's come through from Danger Man. I've been doing things like, you know, this wonderful television play, yes. and this, you know, one, great parts and everything. And they, would you like to do one of these? Yeah. And I said, yeah, of course I would. I'd love to do it. Because the great thing about ITC stuff, it was like making a mini film. It, it was a full on film. And, you can tell um, them now, the gloss is terrific. Fantastic. You know, it's all on the screen. Yeah. We had wonderful technicians, and that's the other thing I love about film is that you're not doing it on your own. I mean, when, when you, in final analysis, when the camera's there and you're doing it, you are on your own. Yeah. But the bottom line is you're surrounded by a team of yeah. other people, and we're all in it together. And that was one of the things that I really, really gives me a buzz, actually, about filming, is that you're working with this group of people, all with their own little parts, but it all comes together in this great... And did you treat, did you treat Danger Man, even though it's a TV series, yeah. I mean, it was made like a film, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was, film, made using, on film. Using production methods of filming, yeah, absolutely. And the camera at the yes, time. Yes, just a bit quicker. A bit quicker, yeah, yes. yeah, had to be done good phase. When you got the part, you said, oh, they said, oh, we've got this part with Patrick McGowan in Danger Man. What did you think? Did you think, oh, great, Patrick McGowan, did you? So but handsome then, guy, you know. Well, I didn't, that, funny enough, actually, I didn't know that much about him. No. I mean, I'd heard, his reputation as a good actor had preceded him, and his reputation as quite a... Uh, a demanding actor who preceded him, but beyond that, I didn't know a whole lot about yeah. him. I just yeah. knew he was sort of a uh, flavour of, of the yeah. month or star of the minute or whatever, happy with like Roger Moore was at the time. Yeah. And um, but I had heard that he was quite not difficult. Patrick wasn't difficult at all, but he he wasn't. I mean, he wa he wasn't a man where he went on the set and he went, oh, this is, this is easy, this is relaxing. Yeah. So I thought. I don't know all the lines, <laughs> inside and yeah, backwards. Yeah, yeah. You got that and, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you should anyway, but sometimes you think, oh, well, I haven't quite learned those lines for tomorrow, so I must, you know, really get to the dressing room tomorrow and polish them up, but not, not, not. Well, do you remember arriving on the set and doing your I do, show? actually. The first scene I had was with him in a bar. Was it in a bar or was it in a hotel room? I can't really remember. I think it was a your eagerness combined with his reticence yeah. makes it very funny, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. it does, yeah. it does. And uh, as I say, that was the first thing I ever did with Patrick. And uh, it, 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 I, I think it did go well. I, I could sense that he was reasonably pleased. And, um, you know, from there on in, it... Yeah, well, it, it must have been, because you did 
three danger managers. Three, three, three times. Three times. One prisoner. Yeah, yeah two yeah. prisoners. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can see in that. I think. I mean, you can see in that this trademark McGoo and reluctance. Yeah, in exactly. A with a leading lady. Yeah. As a sort of reluctance to sort Absolutely. of look her in the eyes and, and to engage and yeah. all of that. Yes. No. I, <clears> and that's very much his personality. I would have thought. Well, it? I heard. I mean, someone's. I can't remember how I heard, but that he was not comfortable with actresses. And I don't know why, I mean, whether he thought we were fallen women or I don't know, <laughs> uh, we were all rogues and vagabonds or what have you, but we weren't proper, proper people or something. But um, there was a sort of, um, I, I just don't think he was... I, it was I a very that, devout Catholic, wasn't it? He was very devout, was a really happily married. And I, you know, all of that, what I have just said really is probably just a bit rubbish really. I just don't think he was that comfortable working with women. You know, and, yeah. and having to interact with them and, and perhaps open up to them. But then he never opened up a whole lot to anybody on stage, and that was part of his attraction. Did he keep himself to himself at that point? Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So yes. would he work with you when you were block rehearsing the scene? Would you work with McGowan in the rehearsal? Yes. Or would you work with a technician just really filling in for McGowan's? No, no, he, 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 <clears> wanted to do the, he wanted to do the scenes. I mean, the, the thing was, it was very fast, mm -hmm. it was also very well written. Yeah, so you have to get the rhythms right. right. And you can't do that with a, yeah. you know, without doing it. A scene like that, would, would that be three or four takes to do something like that, Jane? Or, or if you were lucky? We did it actually quite quickly. I think yeah. we did it like in two or three, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, and, and the thing is that he's he's very fast. He's very, you know, you, you've got to sort of, you can't jump on his lines, but you can't, there's, there's no pauses there. You, no. you know, you've got to keep yeah. you've got to keep the energy going. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah. So when you did uh, uh, now you did three episodes of Danger Man. Did you were, were they quite a space to part in the or were they bang 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 one on top of another? You know? Not one on top of another. I think I did <coughs> at least two in the first season. Mm -hmm. How many seasons were there? I can't it was a half hour, uh, thirteen. Yeah. And then there were, I, don't, I don't know how they went out in a block. I can't remember. But it was I think it was. Two three, years of it, wasn't it? Three blocks of hours. Three blocks of hours, yeah. Well, Space then I was in, in the, the first yeah. block, or the second block. Yeah. I think probably the second. Did you get the feedback? Yeah, yeah. Did you get the feedback, feedback I got was good, and yeah. that he liked me, yeah. and that I was he, I was one of his favourite actors. Yeah. Actors oh, to work with. Yeah. 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 And the atmosphere on the set. You felt comfortable with yeah. 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 I mean, bear in mind, later on in the prison, when he was taking every single duty on, what was the atmosphere like on the Danger Man set? Was it hard working but fun? Or yes, I would say so. Or? No, 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 not pressurised. I mean, everybody was on their toes, and mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't sort of the sort of fun that you would have on, say, The Saint no. or Random Hopper, right. which was sort of laughy, jokey all the way through. Because Patrick wasn't like that; he was all business. And um, but it was good. It was it was upbeat. Everybody was comfortable with each other, and it was friendly, and it was just uh, just very very yeah. professional. Yeah. The, the other story you did. Um, Room in the face, though, wasn't it? Which I think is. Yes. Um, um, do you remember anything about that? Because is that the one where they've got the hostage in the. Uh, yes, and I've come to rescue him. He's my yeah. husband, wasn't yeah. he? Yes. Did you have a favourite episode of the Magoon, or did you enjoy. You know, did you. I think that one that we just saw is my favourite episode. Because you enjoyed the character. I enjoyed you? the character. Yeah. She was such a. Silly, naive and, naive and, and yeah. silly, and yeah. it was fun, it was light hearted, and, and then it, it got on into a slightly more, you know, yeah. Complicated situation where she actually betrays all her values and helps him out. Yeah, yeah. Did you socialise at all with the girl? No, no. not at all. No, no just did the line went. Yeah, yeah. Not, um, no. no, I mean he had a sort of group of people around him that he he, he was with. You know, that the, the first director was Dave Tomlin and uh, Frank. What, what was it? Was Mayor. Frank Frank Mayor. Mayor. Was Frank his son double? Yes. Or was that? Yeah. Yeah, Frank Mayor was his yeah. So, um, she did three days, man, so then you were invited back to do The Prisoner. Yes. Now, was that a different kettle of fish? Did it you certainly hear about, was. Did you hear about The Prisoner in advance, or um, was that years ago? Again, not, just not a lot. Yeah. Uh, it was another episodic television show, yeah. and um, I didn't really understand it. No. I mean, I did understand it. I mean, I understood the concept, but I, I didn't, you know, the brainwashing yeah. and, the, and all of that. But, I mean, it obviously went a lot deeper than, than, than I, I could... And you've got, you got a sense of that from actually. I think the, so, yes. And yeah. um, you know, it was it was a double cross in. On it was, yeah. yeah. But, but that actually demonstrates the fact that we got we we got a sort of 
a rhythm and yeah, a, 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 a sort of good way of interacting. Well, with obviously, the character of the number six character is different to the John Wick character. Oh, yeah. So there's even more barriers up there between. Oh, yes. You actually there's a physical barrier between you anyway. Yes. Yes. And you're much more flirty in that, aren't you? The character is yeah. sort of pouty yes. and. Well, she's 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 playing a game, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And he's. Uh, He's not interested at no, all, no, is he? No. no. I wanted to ask that today. Obviously, one of the reasons they employ uh, an, uh, an attractive leading lady is to um, show that person in the uh, in the nicest possible way, sort of thing. Yes. Put another bit. Put another bit. Put another bit. Sexless, aren't they? Well, they are a bit. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they are a bit sort of. Well, they're not drab, but they're just yeah. strange. Yeah. Were you aware of that? So when you were booked as the leading lady in. in Things, you know, part of the reason is to provide glamour in the show, isn't it? You know, I suppose that, so, yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose I was, I, I wanted to think of myself as an actor, of course, rather, yeah, yes, yeah. rather than just, yeah. You know, I, I was just wondering that, you know, because we're talking about the 60s here, aren't yeah. they, where they're, 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 you know, the, I suppose chauvinism was at its height, you know, yeah, in a way. Was, you know. Yeah, but that, that did, you, did you feel you had to prove yourself as an no. actor for, when you were the leading lady? No, you know, no, no, so, no, no. No, I, I, know, I think most of my contemporaries felt the same as I did. We just got a, a great part and just got on and, and, and did it. Yeah, yeah. And um, I have to be honest with you, it was a very attractive age. I mean, it yeah. really was an attractive period for the way women dressed, you know, especially mm. young women. Yeah. Um, uh, the clothes, the mini skirts, all that sort of mm. thing. So it, it was an attractive age. And it was an attractive age after the 50s, which was fun, but um, I don't know, all those, those longer skirts with petticoats and things, but uh, mm -hmm. not everybody could wear them. But the, the 60s had a, it had something about it which was um, appealing and you know, chauvinism. Yeah. No, did you, um, mm -hmm. of course the atmosphere, did you find any difference on The Prisoner? And when, when McGowan obviously did The Prisoner, he was taking all roles on it, he was executive producer, Directed bits of them, and uh, did you feel? Did you yeah, there was there was a, a there was a difference on the set. And there was a, there was a sense of more pressure, and it, it wasn't it, it, the atmosphere was good, but it wasn't as quite as as smooth running or as as well oiled a, a, a wheel running yeah. as as uh, on Danger Man. In Danger Man, they sort of got into a good rhythm. Everybody knew what they were doing, where they were going with it. But the prisoner really was a bit unknown territory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know that anyone in the world that doesn't like the Avengers. I mean, that was oh, a really great show. That was, that was a fun show. What, what was about me like compared oh. to the Gouin? <laughs> Chalk and cheese. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Patrick, for me, was a delightful, charming man who... Um, how can I, I mean, it, it, he was just different. I, and he, he was working with a certain style and genre, with, especially with, with Diana Rigg and, uh, and Donna Blackman. And, uh, you know, that was it. I mean, I... I mean, I never saw him really in anything else, but yeah, yeah. Uh, he was very successful in this. He had that great English um, dapper charm, and um, it worked yeah, for yeah, him. Yeah. Well, did you have to play it any differently? Or, you know, did, did, was it more fun? Or well, it was, it was comedy as opposed yeah. to uh, drama, I suppose. That's the yeah, only difference. Yeah. You've got to take a bit of tongue in cheek, right? Yeah, of course, you know, yeah, watch yeah, the boxes yeah. disappear. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's, yeah, can't it's take it too seriously. Yeah. But that's, that was the lightness of the show. Yeah. That, that was ABC, that wasn't it? That, that was ABC, sure, yeah. yes. Uh, did you find your... Uh, they talk about this, don't they? They talk, they talk about the ITC rep company. Did you feel part of a rep? I didn't, actually. You know, the, the, yes. There's a certain actors and actresses yes. that turn up again and again. And yes, I mean, I felt, you know, turn up on the set and they were all the same old people. Yeah. Johnny Goodman and... Uh, yeah. um, well, I didn't, we didn't see much of Lou Gregg. Uh, he never came on the set. And um, the... the Roger Moore's Roger people, Roger, yeah. Roger Baker and... Um, Bob Baker, you know, I mean, yeah. Bob ba Baker, sorry, and... Um, thank you. Monty and... Um, yes, it was a great sort of stable of ITC people. Oh. What, what, what was an actress's life in the 60s for you? Was it, did you socialise in the evening with actors and actresses? Or? Yes, some of them. Yeah. I, I, yes, I mean, I had friends in the business. Mm. Uh, yes, I definitely had friends in the business. And um, we used to do the, the you know, the... the Things that everybody does now, which is run out and have dinner at restaurants, and yeah. then you'd rush over to a club like the Aratusa on the King's Road and disco a night the yeah. night away, that sort of thing. And uh, 
So, I mean, you were working hard though, and I mean, what would you tell us, what would be a typical, to say on the prisoner, what would be a typical day for you on the prisoner? What time do you turn up in the morning and leave I, in the evening? What would you do in between? I think in, 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 on the prisoner, I'd turn up somewhere at 7.30, 8, depending on how complicated the hair and makeup was. You have to drive yourself in, you yeah. have the luxury of the sure. studio driver, no. and up to you, yeah. Um, and we'd start work, I think it was at 8.30 or 9. You'd be on set for them, would you? Yeah. yeah. Or, uh, you know, standing by anyway. Right, yeah, sure. And then we'd work through till 5.30. If we were going to work overtime, all the unions had to be asked. Right. There'd have to be a quick sort of get together and yeah. shall we work tonight? Mm -hmm. All right. right, yes, that sort of thing. In the States, it was completely different. I mean, we had to turn up at work and be ready on the set for 7 o'clock in the morning. And I remember waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning to drive sometimes 100 miles to get to the location. Um, so that I could be in makeup by 5, 5.30 and ready to start shooting at 7. Mm -hmm. And they would work on until 7, 8, 9 at night, depending on how, how you know, how long they, they wanted to do it. They had, they had sort of collective agreements with the unions and that was that. And when they were, when they were out of the States, it was even worse because there were no rules. And when we did Magnum, I remember working one day from, uh, I think it was 4.30 in the morning until, until the next morning. And, and that was a long day. And Tom said it was doing that all the time. <laughs> did you know in advance you'd be doing this? Or would you no. turn up at 7 in the morning? And I think the day would probably end. Yeah. But they had so much work to get through. Yeah. And they shot them in seven days. And that was that. And yeah. they shot uh, they shot six day weeks then. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, actually, we'll talk about the American group. Yeah. You, you moved to America. And yeah. a lot of work over the Before we do that, though. Now, another series, a uh, strange report. Now, that was yes. a much more serious and... Uh, it was sold as a much more, it was tackling well, contemporary, it, yeah. yeah, tackling contemporary issues yes. and all this kind of thing. Instantly the tone is different in that yes. show, Yeah, you know? it was a rather more serious piece. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> was, the chap there was a, a sort of BNP or a sort of a... a, a yeah, a, a bit right-wing and I was uh, leaning very far in the other direction yeah. and had yeah. a boyfriend that was also... That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, so, I mean, that, that just shows you the range, I suppose. Like, yeah. you know, one minute you're doing the Avengers, and then reacting at boxes shrinking, and the next thing you're doing is talking about racism. Yes, right? yes. Um, no, I mean that was that was the fun of, of being an actor was having having the diff the chance to do lots of different parts. And in that respect, in my career, I have been incredibly lucky. I have not been sort of stuck in one yeah, one situation. Yeah. Yeah, before we, that one completely, I this is one of my favourite series of uh, Randall and Hopper. You did that one as well. Yeah, so that's, that was a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was just a laugh and shit. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. Can you tell us about Randall? How, how, how about Mike Pratt? Oh, Mike, Mike was wonderful. I mean, yeah. he, was, he was just a, a sweet, nice, good guy, a really good guy. And it was a terrible tragedy. He died, but he died early, so early, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Ken I'd worked with before on a very, a very sort of. Um, Hammer film. Oh, I like that film. <laughs> I think you'll find a few fans of that film in the yes. film It came out at the same time as the um, In the Heat of the Night, and, and the, the title was, what was it? Night it was the, the Night of the Big Heat. <laughs> and people went, I thought, maybe they'll get muddled up, and I think it was In the Heat of the Night and not the Night of the Big Heat. Christopher Lee was in that as well, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. And Peter Cushing, who was, it was yeah. rather sweet. What a great liner yeah. that is. Did, did, yeah. you, did you like that film? Did you, I did. did have, we had yeah. such a, I mean, yeah. I mean we all... I, well, I know I did. I, we were right on the ragged edge of being over the top. Yeah, well, I mean, definitely. That's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of actresses and actors, they might just, you know, they're like, they get a bit sniffy about the, the, uh, the more populist, I suppose, things yeah, that they I do. Mean, as I said before, we're actors, we're entertainers. Yeah. I mean, we're not here to educate, uh, preach to, or anything else. We're here to, to make people yeah. feel good and give them a bit of escapism in, yeah. in life. Yeah. We still work in I mean, apart from Night of the Big Heat, obviously your the big film of the 60s, was, was the line of winter, winter wasn't it? Yes. I mean, that, so as well as doing your TV, you were doing your film work as well. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that, that kind of took... I, I, I did a stage play, which I think I'm, I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, that um, probably the best thing I ever did in the theatre, mm -hmm. despite the fact that Peter said he didn't believe it, but never mind. <laughs> um, uh, it, uh, but I was doing that, and then, then I got a chance to test for Lion in Winter. And a friend, a, a director called Val Guest said to me, Jane, there's this film coming along, and it's going to be Peter O'Toole and Catherine Hepburn. And I said, Ka Catherine Hepburn and Peter O'Toole? Are you sure you got this right? And he said, Audrey Hepburn and Peter O'Toole again. They'd already done a film together. So no, no. He said, maybe you can get a job as a sort of 
you know, lady in waiting or something like that. And I thought, yeah, that would be fantastic to be in a film with those two and watch them working. And then I got a shot at the um, at the test. And this is a bit where the politics came in. This this was with through an agency called the William Morris Agency, who was very, very big at the time. And they represented the producer. And they I think they represented the writer. I can't remember, they didn't represent Peter, but they definitely did represent Catherine. And uh, so it was in their interest to get one of their other clients into the film, and, and I got my shot at it, um, and, and the chance and to do And you enjoyed that, obviously, you were, you were Gold, Gold Globe nominated. Yes, yeah. What yeah. you were, I mean, it's a problem, I shouldn't ask you, but who actually beat you in that then? It was um, Rosemary's Baby, and oh, it right. was the, the yes, the, the older actress whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. She's a very well established yeah. uh, sort of Hollywood favourite, and she was wonderful. I mean, she it's really was. Yes. And were, it was a strong, it was a very strong year. Yeah, for, it's for great. You were nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Of That's correct. Right, yeah. yeah. And of course, you're very proud of that. I mean, I'm very anyone, anyone, anyone who's seen yeah. the film will realise what a great movie it is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So. Would you say that was a career highlight for you? I think it's a career highlight. It's a good thing to have, is that right? Yes. 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 Wonderful yes. script. Mm. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, that was one of the things that was so great about Patrick shows that the scripts were all so good. Yeah. They <coughs> really yeah. were. I was just doing watching these little bits just now. I mean, I, I can still tell the stronger script, and then... You, you can continue. remember them, yeah. Probably. Well, not so much that, but you, you, you just remember the writing. The writing was so good. Mm. Yeah, especially... And that, that was a lot down to him, I think. You know, he made sure that the scripts were right. Yeah, yeah. And we had that story earlier that uh, the script didn't... Not that, yeah. What was it? The script didn't get made? No, the script... Yes. The yeah. script. It's not an unmade script. It was it's, a rejected yes. script. It was a rejected it's script. Well, that sounds right. about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Mark Stein would have had something to do, I'm sure, with the, with the script selection as well, but... Do you have any connection with George Martin? That's because you would really, no. wouldn't it? Just by his no. backstage, you no. would. Yeah. So you did the line in winter, yeah. so you? and then you, you know, break in America. Yeah, well, yeah, then I got, I got another film, which I unfortunately never really saw the light of day with an actor called Bo Bridges, and, and also John Mills was in it. And that, was a, that was a marvelous part. Uh, it was a convict love story set in Australia. And it actually wasn't a bad film, but at the time, there was some real class quality films that were out mm -hmm. and it wasn't rated very highly. I think if it had it come out and say now, it probably would have done very well. It was sort of on the slightly on the Disney side, but it was a it was a yeah. lovely love story between yeah. two Australian yeah. convicts. Yeah. Made in America yeah. but set no, in Australia. Made in Australia. Made in Australia. Made in Australia. Yeah. And then from there I met my American husband and moved to America and that's the main yeah. reason I went to the States. Because when you when you look at these shows, you know, in the genre, in the sort of cult TV, look at the, you know, you're in the Avengers, mm -hmm. in the Presumed Age, and then you go to Mission Impossible. Yes, so that's the best thing I did out yeah. there. Wow. Yeah. Leonard Nimoy and I on the boat on, oh yes, that was, yeah. that was lots of fun too. And uh, that was the sort of classic Mission Impossible, and it, yeah, it was, that one, was a yeah. good film. <laughs> yeah. Well, I said it was the proper one. The film's been very good. I've never so. seen that episode. Are you, are you the, um, uh, the you, sort of, what are you doing in that one? Are you, are you the lady? You are are you in distress in that one and they have to help you out? I don't right? know. I either that or I was a bad, bad person that looked good again. I can't remember. I know I lured Len Fimo into sort of, you know, infatuation. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Very Charming Intelligent Man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a, I'm, so, moving on, I mean, you, you, how long were you in America? How long were you working in America? I was there 20 years. And you, you did yeah. 20 years? Yes. So, yes. I mean, I'm, uh, as I see more shows come to mind, The Incredible Hulk you were in as well. So I was a, in The Incredible <laughs> Hulk. That was, oh, so much fun. I mean, all, the, the thing about the American shows is they were so weird and fantastical and obviously spent more money on the shows and, and everything else. And, and I. Uh, I had to be rescued from a burning building by uh, Lou Ferrigno, right. who was a, a sweet man, and Bill Bixby was, became a good friend out there. He was, he was a, a smashing man. And um, Lou, I don't know if people know this, was, was deaf and dumb. Oh, right. Yeah. And but very, very nice. And, uh, you know, he really was, he was a big man. And, uh, Did you feel when you moved out there? It was like starting your career again, you know? Did, did no, because I'd gone out there with a big calling card, hadn't I? Yeah, the CV helped, did it? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I don't think I'd have got... Yeah, I mean, because no. Hollywood is a tough town, and I, I mean, the, the, I always remember an audition I went to. Um, it, it didn't matter who you were, what you'd done in the business, they didn't care, 
unless you were a major, major star and, and were going to bring money into the show, you had to audition for everything. They never sent scripts like they did in England saying, you want to do this? It was, uh, I had to ring up and say, get out to so and so Universal or wherever on, on this afternoon and read for this part. I get in there and, you know, there'd be an, another bunch of other very good actresses yeah. out there, and some of them very well known. Yeah, of course, yeah. But I went to an audition once for a Polaroid commercial. The commercials were lucrative in those days. I actually only did one um, for Yardley out, out in America. Um, and of course, because there's so much money behind them, and they really do spend the time, and they look pretty, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I went to, um, not a Polaroid commercial, it was a commercial for something else, I can't remember what it was. But they called us in two at a time. They took a Polaroid picture of the two of us sitting side by side, on a couch, a settee, and then cut them in half. So that they had their, their two pictures of their two separate <laughs> actors. That's how that's the conveyor belt type of, of casting that went on in Hollywood. Very, very soulless. And you had to be uh, you had, the, the thing I found the, the best thing was to have a sense of humour about it. Right. Yeah, you either had to be very hard and very tough skinned and very pushy or you just had to have a so this you, is hilarious. You've got a lot of work out there, but presumably there are a lot of rejections as well. Oh, yeah. Really, because there were so yes. many people going for fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, Patrick had moved out there by that. Did you run into him at all? I did run into him. He was doing a film about a dinosaur. Yeah, baby. A baby, 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 baby yeah. that's right. Yeah. And um, I'd gone to visit another friend of mine, Julian Fellows, who was also in that film on the set. and gone down to see him and I think have lunch with him. And Julian said, you must say hello to Patrick and, and so on. So I went up said hello to him and he was, he was great, he was, he was lovely, he was very relaxed and easy and he said, oh well I'm not really, I don't have to do too much work anymore because my wife's making all the money yeah. selling real estate yeah. and I thought, yeah I'm sure, and he was living, um, you know, but he, yeah. he, he's, he was just Patrick. Yeah, yeah. because Peter, in case you don't know Patrick, my mother's wife, Joan Drummond, is one of the biggest real estate agents in I know, LA really. these days I think. Yeah, and you, you can make a lot of money. Mm. Selling property in selling property. places like Pacific Palisades, which is where we're doing work. Um, yeah, well, you've got seven and a half million dollars worth of property, and you're making three percent off the top of that. Yeah. That's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, did you enjoy working in America then, Jane? Did you, I did. Did you feel it helped your career? You know, you, you, I don't know if it helped my career. Right. Um, uh, no, because I think really and truly, I should have stayed in England. I mean, had I not met my, my, my husband, um, it would have probably been wiser to come. In fact, when we finished the line, when Peter O'Toole said to me, he said, now you've got, you've simply got to get out into the theatre and play, go up to the Hebrides or somewhere like that and play one huge part after the other. Yeah. Um, and make a fool of yourself and just, you know, and then you can, you know, really work your way up to being a big. I was just wondering, did you move to America primarily because you married an American? Yeah. Or did you move because you had a big success in the line and no. you thought now no. there's the logical no. step now is Hollywood? No, I, I don't, I didn't. And I, I think that's a very bad idea for actresses or actors to get to a certain point in their career. It, it is difficult to, 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 but if you get lucky and you get that one big film, yeah. they will take note in the States. And, and word gets around, it's astonishing how even without the, all the publicity and everything, there's a grapevine. And the word gets out, and there's somebody good in, in the UK, they will find them. And funnily enough, Anthony Hopkins, who became a good friend um, when we were doing the line in winter, he had to move back to England <coughs> to get when I say rediscovered, but to get his career back on track. Because he had this fantastic career for many years, and it was just because his ex wife is now my best friend. Um, and his career was just sliding, sliding, sliding. He was doing. Um, I mean, really awful television films at one point, which he shouldn't have been doing. And Jenny kept saying, let's go back to England, let's go back to England. And he went back, he got, he did National Theatre here, he did Pravda, and then he got picked up again for Hannibal Lecter, yes, and, course, yeah. and that was it, he was back yeah. on, on track again. But as I say, there is a network within the industry of, of the really good people, and word gets out, and someone's good, they will know. So you don't have to go to Hollywood to prove yourself or make it or whatever. And I wouldn't have done that had I, had I not got my 
Well, yeah, I mean, we had a clip and you eventually came back to it. I mean, did some more stuff. I mean, one yeah. of my favourite shows at uh, the period when you came back was Lovejoy. That was a great oh, that was, show. Yeah, well, that was fun. Yeah. That was almost like an ITC show for the 90s, yeah. even though it wasn't made by ITC. It felt that way, you know. And I've been in the National Youth Theatre with Ian McShane. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, really def he's another one that defies, you know, you look at him and just, how old is Ian McShane? Does he just keeps going and going and going. I know. And, going, it? and he's a good actor, and, and he's had this huge success with um, Dead, Deadwood. Deadwood, yeah. yes. Whereas yeah. he's really, and I guess they just cancelled the series, which is a big blow. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. yeah but, um, Box, I think, yeah. yeah. But Deadwood. that's what, you know, being a jobbing actor is, is about, is you just keep going as long yeah. as you possibly can. Yeah. I mean, you came back to look after the family business. I did. I came right. back to look after the family business. It was a temporary situation which turned into a rather more permanent one than I wanted. Yeah. And I'm still trying to sort of get out of that because acting is not a forgiving business. You can't pick it up and put it down. You, you, you have to do it or you don't do it. Mm. And at the moment, I haven't been able to do it properly, so I haven't yeah, done got, it. Nobody wanted it. You've got a proper me. job at the moment. Um, Nine to five. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I'm trying to sort of rearrange all that so that I can. So that's so that's what's happening. Again. You are you are going to try and get back into. Oh that. yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Are do, you still I with do. your agent in, in, in you know, uh, yeah. 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 So yeah. you're going to stay and, and yeah. try and get. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've never seen you. Um, perhaps you can remember the moment the time for it was um, after we had you as a guest years and years ago. Um, I saw you in a late night. It was a courtroom drama thing, wasn't it? Oh, that's right. We did a series. Uh, well, thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Yes. It was, a good show, I mean. it was a very good little show. It was a good half hour, a little half hour show, and the BBC had put it together at the time to go out against the bill, uh, which was also a half hour show. It was not really a soap opera at that time. It was a good police show for half an hour. It was a half hour show. I think I'm, I remember it being late night, but my memory could be playing tricks. No, on no, that. I'm talking about yeah. the bill right now. Yeah, but, right, yeah. So they thought they would do it against, but it was completely the wrong show for the bill. I mean, yeah, there was no way it was going to compete with it. No way. It was it was about uh, it was about um, what do you call the court below Crown Court uh, magistrates court, yeah. which are very basic cases and what it was and should have been was a good afternoon show right. that's what yeah. I thought would yeah. put it out in the afternoon where people you know want to watch a bit of mystery or drama court drama but nothing too heavy and serious well it didn't work the way they wanted it. And so they put it out at 11.30 on a Sunday well, night, and that was the stone dead. It just killed it, did it? Yeah. Completely. Yeah. You played a... Uh, a one of the magistrates, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I, I don't know how many people that caught that, because it did go out. Yeah. In a, in yeah. A, in a we had some good actors in it, actors who went on and did, you know, good things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so now, timescale-wise, you're still running the business that you're the family well, business. Well, yes, that's all it changing a bit now, and, and I'm doing other, other something else. Hopefully. Should... Hopefully. Hopefully we'll see you in. Now, what, what, do you, what do you fancy? Do you fancy getting onto the stage? I don't or? mind. Just give me a job. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't mind. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll tell you what, then we'll ask, should we have some questions? From yes. The uh, gentleman there. Yeah, yeah there are, well, two links, possibly. Um, the character in Six Road Man was referred, quite unusually referred to by her first name, yeah. Alfie, yeah. which is quite unusual. Was there any significance in that at the time? And also, it was reputed that there was a, this sort of telepathic thing. Yes. What's your, your that take on telepathy, that kind of thing? Yeah. Oh, I believe in it. I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's the sixth sense, isn't it? I mean, isn't that, isn't the sixth sense? I mean, we just haven't developed our telepathy. I knew I you were going to say that. that. Yes, I, I, think, I think it's a sign, what? I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I think it's a scientific reality. Yeah. But we have just, for some reason, allowed that part of our brains not to develop properly. Was there any significance at the, t at the time of the character being known by the name rather than just number, whatever you like? I, I don't know, to tell you the truth. I, 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 I don't know. Because it was unusual. It is unusual. There's only yeah. a few characters in the prison are referred to by their name. Yes. You the name I mean, she, was one, she was on the side of the establishment, if you will, so that might have been something to do with it. I mean, she, she, she'd done, you know, she was a spy. It is unusual in the show, as I mentioned, that the, the subject of telepathy is taken for granted, in effect. They, yeah. You know, uh, yes. it, it, it's, it's only, they just say, that's, she's telepathic, and they, the plot revolves around the fact that she yes. knows that number six is impersonating Curtis yes. because she's telepathic. Exactly. And uh, it's unusual to just for a series to just take the subject of telepathy as read. Yeah, she, yes, she's telepathic, that's it, you know. But I think <laughs> um, that, that, that's the sort of forward-thinking nature of the show. Mm, yeah. yeah. Did you judge yeah, me? Yeah. Um, sorry to be extremely flippant, but if Alison was that good, why couldn't she read his mind and find out why he resigned? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, never thought of that, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, he wasn't that I don't think telepathy is reading people's minds. 
I really don't. I think it's it's a gut instinct, uh, a sense more than a, a mind reading thing. That's what I think. I think telepathy is a, is a is some is a sensual a sensual a sensual thing yeah, rather than a, than an intellectual thing, which is why I don't think she would have been able to read his mind. And I, in, a, in a way, the card reading thing was not, in a way, quite accurate, but it was the only kind of, you know, visual representation. It, it was the only, the only sort of thing that one could use in a script like that, really. You needed to convey the fact yeah. visually on screen, but you could do it. I wasn't being I wasn't being No, 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 no. She knew that. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a part that you felt in any of the various media that you felt that you enjoyed most? And you look back and you say, of all the things I've done, that was the one I enjoyed most. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> tough one. I, no, I can't, honestly. I mean, there, there are at least three or four things that I did that I really... I've enjoyed everything. I really have enjoyed everything that I've done because I'm one of those people that blinks out everything else when I'm doing something. And um, I can't honestly say there's been much. I mean, some of the parts in the ITC things when she's, like the, the part in the, um, in the Strange Report, it was a nice part, but it was nothing, there was no, I mean, she was just a, an unhappy girl. It wasn't a part that, you know, did really challenge me in any way, but I mean, the Lion and Winter obviously did. Um, there was one big disappointment in the Lion and Winter, and I hate actors doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. There was a big scene towards the end of the film between me and, and uh, Peter O'Toole, where she tells him to go off and, and kill his sex. And that's what he used to because if they get married, I don't know if you know the film, if they get married and have children, his current sons will kill any future sons. So she says, if we're going to get married, you have to kill your, your sons. And it was a very, I mean, this, this is now suddenly the, the, the worm turning. This is the girl who's been, you know, sweetness and light and everything, who was ruthless enough to go and see him go down and kill those boys. And Peter had an amazing speech in it, which was probably his best piece of work in the film. And it all ended up on the cutting room floor. And he was, Devastated, and, and so was I, to be very, very honest. They said it, it slowed the film down too much at the time. I mean, Peter did things like going out and banging the, you know, knocking the director up in the middle of the night and saying, "Put it back, put it back," because he was, it was a phenomenal. He would have won the Oscar. I mean, I will accept that it was John Wayne that year, but um, it, it, it was a most unbelievable piece of acting. Was Peter Richards best, and it just. Disappeared. Those sort of things can be quite devastating when you're expecting something. Um, and it, it reduced my part a little bit in my own head to a rather, you know, the, the other woman or the girl in the film, but she really wasn't. She was actually as, as bad as the rest of them. Um, Any more? Then, uh, well, that area. Um, do you know if anyone else was considered for the role of Alison, or was it your role to make your own? As far as I know, it was mine. Yeah, I, I don't know if anybody else was considered. What would be the actual? Would you would you ever sit for a role like that, Jane, against other actresses, or would oh, you yeah. just literally offered it? No, it, 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 in those days, which was the, the, the mm. glory days, I used to get sent the scripts and said, "Would you like to do it?" Yeah. And that was lovely. In LA, they were nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> you had to audition for everything, yeah. and now in England, you have to audition for everything too. You you don't just get the part in. Yeah. Not unless you're a big star. Uh, we'll look at the we'll have the lady on the front there. Is there, there. I'll, I'll there. <laughs> is there a part that you would still like to play? <clears throat> is there a part that I'd still like to play? Most actresses seem to when actors have something they still want to do. Do you know, I, I mean, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. I mean, to be very blunt, I'm probably too old to do the Shakespeare roles now because they were all written for very, very young people, even the older parts, because the older <laughs> parts would have been 35, 40 in Shakespeare's day. Companion questions to the earlier one. Um, is there any actor or, or actress you've given that opportunity to act with, or regret not having the opportunity to act with? 
Oh yeah, I mean there's loads of actors I'd love to act with now. Um, you know, a lot of American actors I would love to work with. Um, Al Pacino, De Niro. Um, over here, I'm trying to think of, of actors that, that would be really... Um, I'd love to work with Peter again. I, I think that would be amazing. I'd love to work with Patrick again. So he doesn't do it anymore. Pardon? Is that because they stretch you? Yes, that's exactly the right word. They stretch you. And that's what's exciting about being an actor is being stretched. Stretched absolutely to your limits. Or you don't even know what your limits are. Yeah. Dennis. Have you a series with Buddy Epson? Yeah. On and Joe? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is that Queen Martin production? Yeah. Oh, I do a lot of Queen Martin productions. Oh, <laughs> I was shocked when one of his main leading actors used to read his lines. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. He had story, he had storyboards all over the place. <laughs> this is acting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in Hollywood it, it went on. We'll just leave it. Just got time for one or two more. Let's we'll wrap it up because we uh not by the airs tonight, yes, because he was a real pro. Yeah. <coughs> uh, if they do eventually get around to doing a remake of The Prisoner, would you consider doing a little part? Oh, yes, I'd love to. You sure? Is what there are you doing it? <laughs> 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 We're going to be at the bell. Would there be a particular part? You know, I don't know. I mean, you know, how much should you know, I'm going to play Alison again, unless well, size some miracle that, you know, The Prisoner is remaining young and the rest of us have got old or <laughs> Two, perhaps, or... Sure. Yeah. Yes. Do I, do you, 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 you played the villain, that, well, I suppose, Nine in Winter, I suppose, is a villain. Well, yes, I mean, no, she wasn't a villain. I mean, she yeah. was just a victim of circumstances who suddenly found her, her, her guts, if you will. If you play um, villainous characters in your... Yes. Yeah, you like that, do you? Oh, it's it? great fun. Yeah, yeah, the villainous characters are uh, really good fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they are good fun. Good, now, yeah. we just have one more, and then we'll uh, hit the eight o'clock then, I think. Oh, no, 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 the time is. No, well, that's Jane. Can I say thank you well, very much? Thank it's been you. Pleasure, and uh, I'm sure all the audience will thank you.